Today we're talking to Mike Pitt, uh, the founder of uh, Marketing Fundamentals, blogger, writer, the author of this book I'm holding right now, How to Ch Turbocharge Your Business with a Blog. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about your background. Hi. Thanks, Alex. Um, thank you for inviting me. I'm really glad to be here. Our pleasure. Thank you. Um, my, uh, the journey that, uh, I won't say has ended, but the journey that has taken me to how to turbocharge your business with the blogs started sort of, I, I, you know, I, I hesitate to, to give my age out on camera, but uh, started a couple, almost a, you know, a couple of decades ago. My career before becoming a business owner and entrepreneur was very much traditional agency life, so I worked in advertising agencies, uh, including TVWA, uh, publicists, and I worked on major accounts, uh, Hewlett Packard, Prudential, Vauxhall, so big corporate accounts, a big corporate agency. And uh, marketing is, is my life, and I enjoyed the agency life, and you know, worked on some good campaigns, and got some good results. But after, and I'm sort of I'm shortening the story, because obviously that's, that's quite a long time and a long career, but I, I came to a stage where I thought, well, um, I've enjoyed what I've done, but I want to, if I was starting with a fresh piece of paper, what would I do from a marketing perspective, instead of being a very, formal and suited as I am here uh, with, with the big corporate clients, what would I do if I was starting again with the knowledge and the skills that I have? And I said to myself, well, I want to work with the dynamic business owners and the entrepreneurs who have new ideas, innovative, using innovative technologies. Uh, and sometimes when you're in the, and I say this to, to everybody out there who's in, a, in an industry or career that they really appreciate, they really enjoy, but they're not necessarily exactly where they want to be. They may be just slightly off the direction of where they want to be. And I, I said to myself, okay, um, I'm going to start something for myself because I've always had those uh, entrepreneurial leanings. And so in 2010, I created Marketing Fundamentals uh, and it was to address the marketing consultancy needs of small business owners and entrepreneurs starting out with new concepts and to move me into a, a place that I, you know, that I suppose we all call home, this entrepreneurial community. And I would suggest that maybe only one or two people out of a hundred are in this community uh, and should be in this community because obviously it brings on lots and lots of work, different tasks, some of them outside of your skill set. So I went and uh, I met potential clients at uh, seminars and exhibitions. So I remember Business Startup 2010 was one that was very important. Um, and I just, I'd launched a company just maybe a, a few weeks before that. And I met four potential clients at that seminar. So that was a good start. And I began building a client base and um, delivering consultancy for businesses. And what I found very quickly was that there was a need for that, but also um, there's an opportunity to have a great influence. When you work with a team in a large sort of corporate, you may be working with 20, 30 people in the marketing team, 50 people, and everybody has their section that they're responsible for. But in terms of real dynamism and making a big change, it's very difficult to affect that as one person. But when you work with entrepreneurs and business owners, they understand the business needs. They're very close to the cutting edge, and they want to make changes. And they, uh, you know, for the very, you know, obviously a lot of smart people out there, they understand where they are lacking in terms of expertise, and that's what marketing fundamentals, the creation of marketing fundamentals, was all about. Um, what would you say the main service that you do? In marketing fundamentals? The main service, uh, and uh, this has, uh, is writing content, content marketing. So the focus is on very much on on blog content, website content. Uh, and how using that content to promote the client's businesses, to promote the client's um, products or the services. And it's, it's possibly, a, I wouldn't say a little known fact, but not everybody appreciates that, say, let's say 85, 90% of small businesses, their websites and entrepreneurial websites are created five to 10 pages, and then they don't change. And people say, they, they go through their list of action points, website, done. And they leave it, and then you go back to that website maybe three months later, six months, and it's exactly the same as when you visited it before. That's right, exactly the same as when you visited it the first time. And they're missing an opportunity because 
if you generate a unique content, you've got the chance to build up authority in your niche, whatever your niche is, you've got an opportunity here. People will recognize you because you're week in, week out, week in, new content, new articles, interesting. So you build up authority in the area, but not only do you build up authority from a, um, a statistical point of view, you're increasing the chances of people visiting your website because when you distribute the links and the bit lie links, the shortened links via Twitter, that each one of those is, is an advertisement for your site. So if you've got 50 links in the system, 50 cl potential clicks will drive people to the site. You're not paying Google AdWords. This is uh, something that you can own and you're generating unique content. And this is very much a strategy that I uh, deploy with a lot of the clients that, that we work with. Uh, they start off and they think, well, you know, how do we systematically get involved in social media and use it to our advantage? Well, here we go. We start off with unique content, distribute it effectively and efficiently using the right tools, uh, and then build authority in the area. And what I think a lot of people, a lot of businesses, forget about are the clients that, or potential clients that, or, or prospects who are not in the market today. They may be in the market in six months time. They're not in the market right now. So a lot of businesses are ah, we want to convert. Of course we want to convert. So everybody that's ready to convert in a month period gets all the focus. Those people that we should be speaking to for three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, sometimes these people are neglected. So imagine someone just launched this company. Yes. They do not have any content. They don't have any website. Yeah. What would be the first step? How to generate the unique content that you're talking about? Well, let's let's assume that they've uh, they've identified their brand. Right. What their brand stands for. They're clear about their brand values and what their service levels will be. Um, then they need to develop their own voice. You can look at all the competitor blogs and competitor websites and see what's being produced, and that's great. And you can see, oh well, maybe there's an opportunity here because everybody's writing about X. Maybe if I write about Y, first of all, that's going to give me some prominence. And then you must start writing. You know, there's there's no um, substitute for actually doing. You know, I know from from obviously conversations we've had that you're very good at implementing as well and executing the activity. And it's key that you do this. And your first blog may not win any awards, but it, you, it gets you out there. And then you blog again, and you learn. And one of the quotes I have in, in the book is, uh, you know, you learn by doing, by, do, by blogging on a regular basis, you'll get better at blogging. And you'll see the opportunities that it has. And it will teach you also about yourself. Right. So um, practice makes perfect. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about your book. Sure. So you published it recently. It's called How to Turbocharge Your Business with a Blog. What's that about? It's, um, I, I mean, I... I with the company, I wanted to create a positioning that was very identifiable. You could say, if you were being um, very um, hard-nosed or skeptical, you could say, oh, there's lots of marketing consultancies, why are you different? How do you identify, how do you dis distinguish yourself? And this was uh, our way of, of creating uh, a distinguishing point, a unique selling proposition to use Russell Reeves' original term from 1955, I think. Came up with that, um, and this is a how-to guide, how to use a blog uh, as a successful marketing tool. So it's broken down into eleven chapters, and there's some theoretical discussion, and then at the end, there's a summary of actions that you need to take uh, for each chapter. So the first chapter talks about creating ideas for blog titles and developing an ongoing sort of portfolio of. of possible blog content. So you're not in the position where, and this is a position that a lot of people get concerned about. What if I run out of things to say? What if I've written four or five and that's it? But uh, there's a strategy that uh, I articulate through the book that generates ongoing ideas and gives you options. So maybe you'll write this one this week. Maybe there's a new topical news point that reflects on my industry and I need to answer that. So there was, uh, in chapter four, there's a, a listing of, of different blog formats. I think, there's, I think I've identified 11 or 12, 13 different blog formats. Uh, and it gives you a number of different approaches to generate content. And the ongoing content and the momentum is essential. Um, and I think for a lot of people, they've, you know, oh, we know we should be blogging, but how do we blog? What if two people are blogging? That's fine. Um, what, what if uh, I can't come up with enough ideas? There are enough 
there's a strategy there to, to generate enough ideas. So all of those obstacles, what if I, I say something and I'm a bit embarrassed, that's fine. That's fine. As long as you're, you know, you're not giving out any commercially sensitive information, that, that's fine. You, you will generate your own blog style. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what's key. And I wanted to, to write this book to help people, not as a sort of demonstration of my own abilities, but to actually help people. And the feedback that I've had so far has been fabulous. It's been, this is really helpful. I can't believe how easy to read it is. I can't believe how easy to follow it is. And, and people have been very grateful. And that's, and that's great for me to, to hear. What does it take to write a book? To write a book or to write this book? To write a book, it takes discipline. So you, you'll start off and you, you must think, well, what is this book going to be about? I'm a marketing guy, so I need to think, well, not only what is this book going to be about, it's who is my audience? Who is my audience? How can I help them? Each blog post, if you, if you visited marketingfundamentals.com, you would see that each blog post is intended to help people. So that my um, marketing footprint or my reach is beyond my client base, client consultants and clients are, are the bedrock of, of, of the business. It's beyond the, the client base and it's to people who maybe just have a passing interest in the website and they say, oh, I'm stuck with this, what should I do about email marketing? How should I use Twitter? What should I be doing on Pinterest? And they can read the blog post and there's practical steps. It's not just, oh, you know, please call us and we'll tell you how to do it. We'll show you and we'll invoice you. Um, and obviously, you know, we, do, we do work with consultancy clients on, on that basis. But it's, there are tips there you can follow. And that's why um, people have been very receptive to sort of my Twitter profile and the information I put there. So I followed the same style with the book. Very helpful, very understandable. and useful. Not everybody is a, is a marketing professional. It's a lot of people are business owners and entrepreneurs. So they need that expertise. You can buy this book on Amazon. Uh, you can find the link below this interview. Uh, what does it take to get your book published or you know, being sold on Amazon? The, uh, the publishing, I'm, I'm not an expert in publishing, but the publishing world has changed from a sort of business perspective in that it's now possible to go into partnership with publishing companies and self-publish. So they handle the um, liaison with Amazon for you. You produce, obviously, your, your manuscript and you go through the production processes with them and they set up all of the distribution points. Right. Amazon is a, a wonderful platform in the same way that um, Apple is a wonderful platform for, for, for apps. Um, the year previously we created an app called the SME Marketing app, dot com uh, is, is the website and that's uh, distributed through the Apple and Android platforms. Now Amazon is, is, is fabulous obviously. For anybody that wants to create a book, they need to make sure they have a structure, they need to make sure that they've thought through um, what they're trying to achieve with the book and then um, go ahead and do it. It's a very uh, wonderful experience and something that I've found uh, has come as a result of that is that I have a greater profile. I mean, you guys weren't asking me for an interview before the book. So, yeah. I have a greater <laughs> profile. With it. But also, um, opportunities that I couldn't have imagined are coming my way. Um, so that is something that's real. And you know, I'll say to anybody out there, you, when you're working in your business day in and day out, sometimes there are aspects of the operational side that you may feel are challenging, but you go through those, you go through those. And then new opportunities, when they come, or breakthroughs, or, or, or what, however you want to describe them, are just come thick and fast. You know, I, I may receive a phone call that changes the game entirely. And when I say changes the game, it could change my business model, it could it could have a massive impact on the future of the business in a, in a positive way. Um, and those are the sort of changes that I've realized since the book was published. It was published on the 19th of September. It's available on Amazon. And, and, you know, obviously, there, there was a link beneath this uh, interview. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm very happy with the execution of the book and the fact that I'm getting good feedback and it's helping people. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. And if I could just go back to when we were talking about my sort of agency background. In the agency world, you have to be very commercial. And I'm still very commercial. But I wanted to extend the, uh, the I suppose, the footprint or the number of people I'm able to help um, beyond my client list. So there are people the that, impact. that's right, absolutely right. There are people in countries um, that have read the book and acting on, on the steps and I could never personally cover all of that territory. 
No, I don't, I don't, obviously there are languages some that I don't know. So I don't, you know. Uh, do you plan to translate into other languages? I, I, yeah, I have got, I mean, there is, a, there is a, another phase to, to the rollout of this, and there are some other languages um, identified, so, you know, when, when there's more, I'll, I'll come back and talk right. to you. So you guys don't forget to check this book. Uh, speaking about an entrepreneur, since you're an entrepreneur from different aspects, you're a writer, blogger, mm -hmm. you know, the founder of your own company, yes. what does it mean to you? Being an entrepreneur. I, I think um, I, this is a, it's a very uh, emotive and very important subject, and I think that um, let's let's start with the technical definition. From my perspective, uh, an entrepreneur, the technical definition is is of a serial entrepreneur, somebody who builds businesses and then domains. That's right, builds businesses. Um, <coughs> excuse me, usually to a size um, of of some prominence and sells them and then builds another business. I, that's technical definition of an entrepreneur, entrepreneur as a serial entrepreneur. Uh, most people, or a lot of people I work with are business owners, and I would put myself in this category to, to a certain extent. They're business owners who are on their way to being an entrepreneur, let's say that, on their way to being a serial entre entrepreneur. And for me, it was something that was innate. I always wanted to run my own business. I did what uh, often your family or society may dictate that you should get a good job, a great education, go and work for a big company on household brands, save a little money, don't bash into the walls too much. Absolutely, absolutely. And we've all done that. We've all followed that pattern. And we said, well, actually, that's good, but it's not really what I want to do. <laughs> now, I've done that, and um, yep. I want to be happier. I want to do uh, exactly what I want to do. I have these skills. And I, I also, I mean, I used to, this is one of my favorite um, I think it's a made-up phrase for myself, to be, to be fair. I used to say, um, you know, cutting corners is one thing, but you have to know where the corners are. And when you work for the big companies, whether this is in, in legal or, or finance or marketing, when you work for the big companies, you understand how processes work, why checks and balances are in place, so that when you're in the entrepreneurial community, you know there are certain criticalities along the process. You know how to get things done you know how to get things done well, and then you know how to subvert and disrupt the process to get new results. Right. And I think that's important. So I, I don't think there's, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of uh, attention given to young entrepreneurs, and I think that's wonderful. But there are a lot of entrepreneurs that have come from a, a corporate background who have those skills and then can put them into new uses and, new, new uses and, um, and benefit that way. And I think that's, that's very important. Well, since you're based in the UK and, and you pretty much spend your time here, right? Yeah. What do you think about the entrepreneurship here? I mean, how many people do want to go, you know, and take this risk nowadays, as opposed to staying in a safe environment? A environment? I, I think, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I think that um, people are realizing that their quote unquote safe environment isn't safe. I think anymore. Anymore. And I think that there's a, there's a, you can, there's a, your assessment of risk may change. So you may say, well, the risk could be not launching my own business and not being uh, in control and not being an entrepreneur because I could try and, uh, and I'll use a sort of, um, it's, a, it's, it's almost like a rock climbing metaphor. You can try and hold on in, to your role or your responsibilities in the big corporate environment and as you become more successful, you actually become more vulnerable because your salary is higher and then mm -hmm. You know, when it comes time to downsize those people with the larger salaries, if we get rid of two of them, we've saved all of this money. And the operational people much lower down, they are safer because they are much lower salaries. <laughs> so I think sometimes if you've got a, an urge, it's, it's so true. absolutely true. Sometimes I think that uh, if you've got an urge to run a business, um, you should do it. You should do it. Obviously, you need to do all your due diligence. You need to make sure you've got proof of concept. You need to make sure that you can create the right network. Your business will be profitable. If it's a niche, it's an exploitable niche that will sustain you. Don't just go into a, a, such a, a niche that you know that there's not enough potential profit there. You, you, know, you need to make sure it's a real business uh, opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that uh, in the UK there are people who, uh, and a lot of my clients have been through a corporate experience to a certain extent and said, hmm, okay, now I'm going to do my thing. And there's a lot of people in that. And there's also, as I say, the, the growing subset of young entrepreneurs who are saying, I've read about this corporate experience, I don't actually want that, I want to go straight <laughs> here. And that's fine too, because the two different groups can mesh. And I think London particularly, and also you know, from my experience of other cities, Manchester and, and Birmingham, there are 
hotbeds of, of entrepreneurial activity. And I think that's, that's brilliant. And I th in other countries as well, um, through one of my permanent corporate jobs, going back a few years, I was able to travel to uh, Africa, uh, also other countries in, in, in Western Europe, and just see how that takes hold in other countries. And I think what's common across different territories, languages, cultures, is um, a momentum. Uh, and a belief and a drive to get things done, even things that you know may not have happened before in that country. And I think that's what we all share. We, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners do not look to the government necessarily to make opportunities for them. They do not look to, you know, mm -hmm. they, they make their own opportunities. Right. Not to rely on someone else. Or absolutely, absolutely. And they don't, uh, entrepreneurs and, and, um, and business owners do not um, Say, oh well, you know, we can't do this because of the recession, or we can't do. We can do this, and we will do this. And we'll do it now. And we'll do it now. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Speaking about the future, in which areas of the economy do you think new fortunes are going to be made? Which particular industries, maybe? I think no, no. So it's a very good question, and it's a it's a, it's a comment and question that that is um, raised quite a lot. But I think that the answer really is in you is innate. It's in your own character. If you're for you know, I, I'm here, I'm an you know, author, blogger, writer. I love writing. My passion is writing. I write web copy, I write blogs. I ghost write blogs for clients. Uh, I, you know, I was saying earlier, uh, before we started filming, that I, I write tweets for clients uh, on occasion. Sometimes I need to just remind myself which account I'm in, etc. And some of this can be automated. But the potential success lies within you. Where your passions are, that's where the opportunity is. Because when you follow a business idea to the nth degree and you execute it, you're going to need to be very resilient, very determined. People will tell you no. People will say, oh, you know, there's not enough profit here. You can't do this. You can't do that. And you'll need to keep going. So you cannot just jump into a sector or a territory because, <laughs> hey, that's profitable now. The people that are very passionate about that sector, they will make the opportunities and they will take the opportunities. You need to look at yourself and see what really drives you, what really gets you excited. Um, and when you can identify that, and providing it can be turned into a business, then I think that's where your success is. For some people, that will be, now, you know, I'll, I'll use a, an example, it's probably not very popular. Some people, that might be waste disposal. Waste disposal might be their passion. And a lot of people will go, oh, waste disposal, I don't think I want to be working. But, but for those people that are, that I know our businesses are in waste disposal and making Millions of pounds, millions. So, you know, I think that you've got to look at yourself and see where your passions are, rather than be um, the mainstream story. That's right. I think that's right. You know, I think that's that's the answer. What motivates you every day? I think um, having uh, experienced both the corporate life and the entrepreneurial life, I think it's being able to do what you love doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Going beyond the uh, profit imperative and being able to help people. So how can marketing fundamentals or how can Mike Pitt help people? They can read the blog, get some practical steps, help them with their business. If I meet people at networking and they just need a couple of pointers, I'll give people a couple of pointers. If they want to work as a, a client on an ongoing basis, obviously I'll take people on an ongoing basis. Um, sometimes there are um, opportunities uh, and I, I, there's one that I'm currently discussions with a, a third party to, to, to flesh out. There are opportunities to do work for non-profit organizations, not necessarily, not just in the UK, but uh, internationally, and that one's um, yeah, in some, uh, some... What motivates me is the uh, opportunity to plot my own path, to engage in the activities and work with clients and, and potential clients who uh, I really admire and understand their vision, and I share that vision, and I help them execute. And that's really empowering, both from my perspective, but also from their perspective. And that, that definitely drives me. Um, and also, there's a, there's a number of uh, you know, inspirational people who have done well in business, and they've had, themselves, they've had challenges themselves, and you, you look to them for, for uh, inspiration at times. And then right now it's time for table tennis set of questions. We're gonna ask you simple questions okay. with several answers as an option and you have to pick up just one. Okay. Alright. You ready? Steve Jobs or Bill Gates? 
interesting one. I mean, the entrepreneur's answer, and probably my answer, is Steve Jobs. Although, you could say that the, uh, the, the magnitude of the achievement, and also the uh, philanthropic element, should t tip you towards Bill Gates. You, know, you really should, but you know, the, the, I suppose the entrepreneur's answer is normally Steve Jobs, and that's because of the innovation, the product exactly. innovation. The and I, I, yeah, and I agree with that. But but he, you know, Bill Gates, he you know, he did a. So is there a fluctuation between both? Well, it depends what what perspective you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Because I, I think Apple, you know, under Steve Jobs' leadership, did not make the same philanthropic contribution yeah. Yeah. as Gates Yeah. yeah. All right, iPhone, Blinkery, or HTC? Um, I think because uh, I think I would say um, actually iPhone, but because I'm already I've got a number of Apple products, I don't think it's like the iPhone five is not necessarily a, a must-have. Right. I, 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 I actually think if we're talking about brands, I think maybe they've lost a bit of their aura. That they had so let's see Apple. Year, maybe. Yeah, we'll six one. Sorry, these are supposed to be short answers. Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> uh, okay. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Fruits and vegetables or fast food? Fruit and vegetables. Going to a party or staying home? Party. Which car to drive? BMW or Mercedes? Um, can I say Audi? <laughs> sure. Okay. You should include it next time. <laughs> sure. Being married or not being married? Um, I think. Let's, uh, I'll reserve that one. I'll, <laughs> I'll answer that one another time. <laughs> All right. Maybe next interview. Yes. Who knows? <laughs> God believer or atheist? Uh, personally, God believer. Yeah. Egg or chicken? What came first? Uh, um, chicken. <laughs> All right. For those people who are watching us right now, they want to start up, create something great, create their own companies but they're afraid, or may have some doubts, what would you advise? Again, like imagine there's someone watching you right now and he was an advice. Go ahead and do it. You will learn so much during the process and you'll be able to refine your original idea. And if your idea works out to be not profitable, you'll have another idea. But you must go and do it. You can limit the time that you discuss anything. Definitely. That was Mike Pitt, Marketing Fundamentals, especially for Intuop.